Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. And from all of us here at Our Lady of Lourdes, we want to wish you a blessed and happy and peace-filled Easter Sunday. Let's pray together and celebrate in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. Even on a joyous day like today, we remember how blessed we are to have a God who forgives us and loves us always, no matter what. Let's pause to remember our sins and ask God for his healing. For those times we fail to love as we should, especially in our own families, Lord, have mercy. For the times we are not as courageous in living out our faith as was our Jesus, Christ, have mercy. For the good we mean to do, intend to do, but don't do, the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks to your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that the risen Christ will raise us up and renew our lives. God our Father, by raising Jesus Christ your Son, you conquered the power of death, and you opened for us the way that leads to eternal life. Let us now celebrate this blessed day. Raise us up and renew our lives by the Spirit that is within us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stones which the builders rejected 
has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. To the Paschal victim, give thankful praise. Christ have a seal us, his sheep now he saves. Death and life contended in dreadful strife. Death did not hold him, immortal his life. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is our reason, the victor, the King. Alleluia. Our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead and this is the gospel of our Lord Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ from all of us here in our Lady of Lords in beautiful Massapequa Park I want to as pastor here just say thank you so much for being with us so long on this online mass you know we've been going uh, celebrating mass online for literally thousands of people throughout the world since the beginning of the pandemic and then we decided since we've created this family online that we'd keep it up and so on this Easter Sunday we say not only a happy and blessed Easter to our friends who are physically here at Our Lady Lords and Mass People Park but to all of you who are part of our online family and have been so long with us and been really become part of of everything that is Our Lady of Lourdes. So I hope you, wherever you're celebrating Easter, are having a beautiful and wonderful day. So many times throughout these years, you know, I've always used pictures during the homilies, and I'm going to begin and end this homily with a picture. Let me show you. 
I have been so richly blessed, and I think anyone who's ever been loved knows what I mean. Uh, the, the greatness of wisdom, we're told, is to love and be loved. That's the greatest blessing of all. And I have had the richness of being blessed many times with many people, but certainly among those I have been most richly blessed by is that I got two incredibly great parents, Cecilia and Nicholas. Uh, I loved them deeply and wonderfully, respected them, admired them, and, uh, and they gave me back so much love as well. Uh, I mention that in the context of Easter because today makes sense of everything. And let me explain. You know, uh, when you have loved deeply and been loved, it's a great, great blessing, probably the greatest blessing anyone can have. But the downside of great love is loss. And when we have lost people we deeply, wonderfully love, and you've experienced that just like I have, there's a great emptiness in our heart. There's a broken heart because these people we cared about so deeply are taken from us. And I know what I've tried to do to handle the loss, my dad 18 years ago, my mom just this past year, is to spend a lot of time praying for them and with them. But also I, I regularly go to Holy Root Cemetery and I go to the tomb where they're in the wall. And interestingly enough, that's where I will also be buried. And in the tomb right next to them is my best friend, Father Joe Lukaszewski, who died in the year 2000, another grievous loss of a beautiful person who loved me and I loved. And I sit there and I, I try, if I can, to make sense of life and death. My sisters, Joan and Patty, give me a hard time. They do not go to the tomb and they don't often visit my parents. But they will argue that you of all people know in faith that those are their mortal remains, what's in that wall. But that's not them, that they are pure spirit with God, that they're now in heaven, and that if they are in heaven, why would you go to the place where only their body lies instead of realizing that they are alive in heaven with the Lord? And I, I battle that because I think, you know, we're supposed to honor people in their graves. But I have to tell you, one of the best passages about Easter that I love so much is when they go to the tomb and they meet one of the disciples, the angel who tells them, what are you doing here looking for the living among the dead? Think about that, that beautiful line, do not look for the living among the dead. So really in some ways that angel's talking to me. Jim, you're going to the grave thinking they're there, but they're not. They with the Lord have been raised. You know what Easter is for me? It's the embodiment of the hope we have that we will see people we love again. It really is a day in which we celebrate the fact that this is not the end of the story, that there's so much more. It's called eternal life. You know, there's a reason the church says that Easter is really in so many ways the most important day of the year. People say, what about Christmas? Well, of course, it's very important that the savior of the world came into the world. But what really changes everything is not only that he came, but that he died for us and then rose. And in doing that, conquered death. Conquered death for all the people you and I love and we think we've lost them forever, but we haven't. And the fear we have ourselves of passing from this life to the next. Now here's the thing too. If it's true, as I believe and I hope you do too, that today is the day in which we are truly promised eternal life, a place of light and joy and love and peace and refreshment, a place with no pain and no sorrow but just eternal joy. If that's true, then it should also have an impact on the way we live our lives for whatever time we have left. If we're really going home to God, if that's our final destination, if this thing called death is conquered by life this day, Easter Sunday, then shouldn't it make us, while we're still alive, a little more anxious to do the good, to be the better people we promised we'd one day be, to be more joyful, what are we doing being dour and sour if we really believe that Christ today conquers death? The greatest fear every survey indicates that most people have is the fear of death. But if there's nothing to fear because death is no more than passage to resurrection and eternal life, then shouldn't that impact the way we live our lives here and now? What are we so glum about when we know we're going home to God? Why be sad when we know the people that we think we've lost are not forever lost to us and that we shall see them again? I've said so often in so many funerals that passage from Jesus that I love so much when he talks about the sadness of his own death and then says, but I shall see you again. 
And when I see you again, our hearts will be filled with a joy that no one can take from us. Today is the promise that every person I have loved and lost, and I've lost and loved many as you have, that I'm going to see them again. I'm going to experience their loving embrace. I'm going to live fully, more fully than anything I experience in the delightful life we've had on earth, even more gloriously in heaven, and that that joy is eternal. I hope that Easter Sunday is not just another holiday, but one that makes you realize we are liberated. This is the blessed assurance this day that this is not the whole story, that life does not end at death, that God is good and he wants to bring us home, and home is heaven where we shall be one with the people we love again. I don't know what you think of Elon Musk. I happen to think he's certainly not just the most successful man in the world, but also among the most brilliant. And the uh, elitist New York Times recently interviewed him and said, you you believe in God? Kind of incredulously. And he said, look at creation. Look at the world that we've been given. Look at the people and the way in which they come into being. Look at everything in this universe. How can you not believe in God? Elon Musk is right. How can you not believe in a God? And the promises of a God who says, this life is not the end of the story. There is much more to come, and it will be a glory and a joy and a delight beyond anything we've ever known in this life. That's what Easter is all about. And so I said I begin and end with a picture. Once again, I go back to mom and dad. Our separation is temporary, but mom and dad, I know the promises of Christ are real. Death is conquered this day by eternal life, by resurrection. And yes, as Christ said in the Gospel of John, mom and dad... I shall see you again, and that makes me today the most joyful person in the world. You know, normally at this time, we celebrate the creed, that prayer we say to affirm our faith. But the church asks us on Easter Sunday to do something a little differently. So I'm going to go through the creed in question and answer form. At the end of each question, wherever you are, would you please respond with a loud and clear, I do. Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we will also rise with him to new and eternal life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises made for us at our baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and we promised to serve God faithfully and his holy Catholic Church. So my friends, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of all our sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. It's the faith of our church. God, all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He's forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ now and forever. And to that we all say, Amen. Amen. And now, with trust and confidence in the goodness of God, let's continue to turn to that Lord and God and ask him to listen to our petitions. And the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may boldly and faithfully proclaim the resurrection of Christ to those who do not yet believe in it. We pray to the Lord, 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 hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may embody the mysteries of new life, which we celebrate in our liturgy. We pray to the Lord, 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 hear our prayer. That the newly baptized and confirmed and those received into full communion with the Catholic Church may continue to grow with this community in worship and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Patricia Valdaro, Paulette Sewell, Patricia Carbone, 
Babies Carmela and Liliana are known. Peggy Folan, Marie Tenay, and Nancy Joyce, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Frank Joseph Eppolito, Robert J. Jones, Lucille Stella, Police Officer Jonathan Diller, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for Gladys and Joy Seo, Katul and Annette Altima, Richard Chaplin, Gussie Sino, Lizette Baccaro, the deceased members of Polini and Rissuti families, 25th anniversary in heaven of Anthony Tippi Nocella, and Josephine Granger, and a special intention, who we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And let me, if I can, add some prayers for those who are sick. We began this new list in Advent. Jose Joe Senna, Glenn Hudson, Joe Falgiano. I pray for Bertica of Seattle. I pray for Tom and Randy Slade and Kathy Bordengo. For Judge Anthony Falanga, Eddie Mullins, Mary O'Brien, Tommy Burt, Tom and Patty Yanch. For Katie O'Connor and Angelo and Al Clementi. For Leanne Lasanti and Kimberly Cusack and Christine Bauman. For Michelle Leonhardt and Russell Castro Giovanni. For Vincent Rienzi Jr. For Roy Citrano and Sam Maggio. For Susie and Vinnie Vignardi. For Richard Monaco and Herb Stouter. For Judy Alaco, for uh, Larry Meyer and Richard Cardone. For Janet Chevelle and Robert Telasco. For Thomas Mistretta, Michael Hellenum. I pray for Carmela, Catherine, and also Liliana Marie, those beautiful twins who have been born with health problems. I pray for Michael, who's battling leukemia, as well as Sandra Slater. I also pray for Anne Marie de Blasio and Linda Medrigo and Dario Rivera. Pray for Michael Chanover and Carol Paulo Ashandi, Kelly Leigh Skibalia, for Virginia Rivera, Barbara and Ken Barcenti, for Marie and Ken Johnson and family, for Tommy Swengross, for Sarah, also known as Sally Belfi, for uh, Paulette Sewell, Terry and John Schiara, Maria and Bob Cariola, Melissa Olberg, Sal Manzo, Larry Lewis, for the Paratine and McShea families, Velio Bronzini, for Jack Campbell. I pray as well for Mrs. Kalinowski, for Linda and Frank Rosado, and among the sick, I include Ben Seminella, uh, George Rumi, as well as Ralph Woythaler, my dear friend in Florida. There are others that have come in. I want to mention as well, among the sick, uh, please add Cora Tess Wilson to your prayer list, a 10-year-old who is battling cancer. For Cora Tess Wilson, we're praying for you. I pray as well, once again, for Richard Cardone and for all who suffer from any kind of dementia or Alzheimer's. I pray for all those who are suffering from uh, any addiction, but especially those addicted to drugs or alcohol. I pray for Darlene DeChico, who is recovering from a very bad fall. I pray as well among those who are sick and in need of our prayers for one more here. Oh yeah, that was the twins again, who we already prayed for. And then if I can please pray for those who have passed from this life to the next, um, if you'll bear with me for just a moment. Okay. Those who have died, I've been asked to pray for, include Richard Jennings, Craig Scott, Bessie and T.C. Senna, Thomas Minton, Minter, Roland Rossi, Jenna Tuller, Margie Smith, Tessie Teresa Palmo, Phil Cordero, Frankie Cazetto, Isabella Glauda, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, their dad, Billy Sarasoli, Ray and Monica Carrison, Margaret O'Connor Lasanti, Bridget Clementi, Cecilia and Nicholas Lasanti, Irene and Tom Romano, Ed June and Eddie Jandibitz, Beverly Maggio, Regina Brighton, uh, Justino Joe Ameren, Tom Sully O'Sullivan, Alfred John Sicali, Emilio Alaco, Paul Struzzieri, Maria and Albert Cavelli, Anna and Gary Gomes, all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, Diana Mistretta, James and Rita Volpe, Joseph Sardone, Gina Pelletier, for Emily Lafaso, 
I pray for James Jim Bobrowski. I pray too as well for Chris Baumler, for Betty Moore, Pauline Romano, Sylvia Christ, Beatrice Ferrari. Pray for Millie Paradiso and Mary Rockensees, for James C. Williams and Brian Hussey, Annette Salim Nitro and Judge Donald Belfi, Thomas Peter Lopresti, Joseph Wallweber. Pray for Dennis and Joe Cooney. I pray as well for um, Gerard Wallweber and Richard Jennings and Jamie Scotto and Pam Amodio. Pray for um, Chris Baumler and Pauline McKenzie, her parents. I pray too for Jeanette Chanover and Rosalie Salko and Gussie Sino and for John, Helen, and Luke Moss. You just listened to my long list of people to pray for who are sick or those who've gone to God. And yes, those detectives among you say, but wait a second, the list he just read, he read clothed in purple garments, and that's true. I made that list during Lent. And now on Easter Sunday, I just want to add a few more intentions to that list of people who've asked us to pray for them. Among the sick, I pray for Joe Falgiano, I pray for Diane Carew, I pray for Kathy Bordengo, Anthony Falanga, I pray for Chuck Mish, I pray for Vinny Rissuti, I pray as well for Josephine Romano and Diane Nagel, for Therese Cipolla and Anthony Lusich, pray for my friend Rita as she faces health challenges, my friend Frank Savino, who's now in New York City at a hospital. Frank, we're with you this Easter Sunday. I pray for Bill DeVito, as well as Henry Skoros, Rebecca and Bertika of Seattle, as well as William Jures. I want to pray too uh, for the celebration of Nina Swengross on her 90th birthday. I pray for Caleb on his second birthday and Matthew on his 40th birthday. And among those who have uh, passed away, I want to add to the list I already mentioned, uh, Michael Manzella, and Emily LaFasso, Pat Sestari, Andrew Couric. I pray for Ferdinand Labolita and Chris Baumler, Gina Pelletier, and Beatrice Ferrari, Betty Moore and Bridget Clementi, Mikey Esposito. Pray, of course, for my mom and dad, Nicholas and Cecilia. I pray for George and Joan Scognamilia. I pray for Nick Martone, for Mike and Gary Scorcia, for Nicole Toussaint, Joe Monaco, Ralph Woythaler, pray for Gus Sino, Suzanne Scanio, Brian Hussey, Jim Harmon. I want to pray as well for Millie Paradiso. And let me pray too for someone that uh, just passed away a few days ago from our local neighborhood, Officer Jonathan Diller, 31 years old, cut down in uh, doing active duty in New York City uh, by a gunman, uh, leaves behind a one-year-old son, Ryan, and a beautiful wife, Stephanie. Just one more of those uh, first responders that you know I pray for every single week. And in Jonathan's case, Jonathan Diller, he paid the ultimate price for protecting us, so we pray for him. I want to pray as well for all first responders, all those firefighters out there and all the police and all the EMTs, the people we count on in times of emergency. I pray too for all of our men and women who are not spending this Easter Sunday with their families because they're assigned all around the world for your protection and mine. I pray too for our doctors, nurses, and orderlies and all those people keeping us healthy. I pray around the world for all those places where war continues to rage, senseless war. I pray for the freedom of our friends fighting for their democracy in Ukraine against the oppression of Russia. I pray too for our friends in Taiwan and Hong Kong that they might be free. I pray finally for an end to all conflict in the Holy Land between people of all faiths, that we might recognize there is one God in heaven who wants us to love one another and live in peace and who is ashamed of the wars we wage one against another because we're all created in his image and likeness. I pray for your special intentions and hope that all those people you have loved and lost, you'll know, are not lost and that we shall see them again and that your faith is strong enough to believe that this day is truly a promise of eternal salvation for you and me and all those we love. And why don't I close this prayer as always by turning to the Mother of God, she who stood at the foot of the cross but also knows now her son has been raised. Let's pray to Mary, our mother, and say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord God, with Easter joy, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is reborn and nourished, and we ask all blessings through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through your risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter as we celebrate the raising of Christ from the dead and his paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. And by dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored us to eternal life. And so now, with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory as we join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us so that we might be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here today before you and send forth the power of your spirit so that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in whom we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your Son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. And yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth, in an everlasting sign of your loving covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast in the company of his friends and disciples. And so, while they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice, to his disciples and friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, 
For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. We do all of this in memory of Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and his resurrection, and we look forward to the coming of that day when he will return to bring us all the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those you have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all into one family and heal us of every division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence to share in the lives of the saints in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and in the company, too, of our dearly departed brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. We can believe that they're gone forever, but they're not, and we shall, this Easter Sunday promise, see them again. Let's pause to remember them and commend them to God's tender mercy. And then, freed from every shadow of death, we shall take our place in the new creation, and we shall give you thanks with and through Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen. Easter Sunday, let's purge our hearts and minds of souls of doubt and believe the promises of Christ are real. This is not the whole story. There's much more to come. It's called eternal life. By dying and rising, he opened the gates of heaven for you and me. We have a reason to rejoice and be glad. In a spirit of thanksgiving, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. If you happen to be by someone that you care about, if you're celebrating this Mass at home near somebody you love, Take a moment to wish them peace, and on Easter Sunday especially to tell them that you love them. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, 
but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you at the shanty of my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Not too many announcements, I promise. Just to say once again, Happy Easter from all of us here at Our Lady of Lourdes. And I, I ask you to be mindful too. If you know people who are uh, either in hospitals or nursing homes or rehabs and are spending the holiday uh, in, in that particular location, pray for them. Give them a call. If you have the time and possibility, visit them. I'm thinking of our, our brother, Father Kevin, who's in rehab and celebrating uh, Easter, not with us as he'd like to be, but instead with uh, people getting well. So for all the Father Kevins and all those people we love who are not able to spend time with their families or friends at Easter, we pray for them in a special way. And I just thank you for all your kindness and your support and your love. I like to say this once in a while that wherever you are around the country, around the world, if any particular future journey brings you to New York, please make a point of coming to see this beautiful Church of Our Lady of Lords and know that it is a home where you are always, always welcome. It's your spiritual home away from your spiritual home, and you're always welcome here. Wouldn't be me if I didn't invite you to listen to or watch Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti. If you have Sirius XM, we're on the Catholic Channel on Sundays, channel 129, 7.30 in the morning, 9 in the morning, and also 2.30 in the afternoon. And this week, my guest on Personally Speaking is Charles Spencer, Right away, people are not sure they've heard that name, but it's Princess Diana's brother, the Earl Charles Spencer. We've written a powerful new book called A Very Private School about some of the physical and sexual abuse he experienced and the road to healing and forgiveness after abuse. So Charles Spencer is our guest. I mentioned the course Sirius XM, but if you want to watch the program, we're on YouTube and just punch in there, personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti, and our interview with Charles Spencer, a beautiful interview, will be there. And then next week, a wonderful Catholic journalist named Rick Henshaw, who's worked for the Catholic League and the New York State Catholic Conference and been editor of the Long Island Catholic, gives us an overview of the church in the world today, a wonderfully talented journalist, a Catholic and a believer. Rick Henshaw is our guest next week on Personally Speaking. I hope you'll join us. My friends, let's continue to pray. Father of all love, we ask you to watch over your church and to bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised by this Easter sacrament. And we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now a special blessing for Easter. At the end of each blessing, please respond with a loud and clear amen. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter, and may he protect you against all sin. Amen. Amen. Through the resurrection of his son Jesus, God has granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless you and your family with eternal life. Amen. Amen. You have mourned for Christ's sufferings. Now we celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May each of us come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Amen. And my friends, may God bless you and your families. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ the Lord is risen today. Bye.